my gosh. Oh, that this has fun. been so fun. Yes. You know, though, um, I feel like we're forgetting something. We didn't do factoring when A isn't equal to 1. Oh, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. We got to finish. Let's do it. Factoring quadratics when A doesn't equal 1. What do we mean by A? Well, remember, our basic form is this AX squared plus BX plus C, where A, B, and C are constants. So if A isn't 1, then we have to think about this just a little bit differently, but not too bad because we're all set up with our crisscross method. So when I look at 2X squared, how can I get 2X squared? Well, 2X times 1X. And then I think of factors of 12. Now, wait a second, though, because it's not going to just be factors of 12 that add to 11 because one of those factors is going to get multiplied by this 2, right? All right, so we have to just keep in mind that we have a little bit different. One cool thing, though, is notice that we have this plus and plus. So do we already know what the signs are going to be? Of course we do. Plus and plus, right? C is positive. The signs have to match. All right, let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm just gonna randomly pick three and four and see what we get. So here we go, three, two, 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 eight. Oh, this happens to me so often. I wasn't even trying to get it right the first time. I wanted to show you what to do if you didn't, but we got it, so check. Do you remember how to write it in parentheses? I hope so. Boom, boom. And remember, plus, plus, so two X plus three, times x plus 4. Moving on, 5x squared minus 19x minus 4. Looking at number 17, this time c is negative, which means we're going to have a positive and a negative. And then do you remember the rule? When we do our crisscross, we want the larger product to be the same sign as b. This time b is negative, so I want my larger product to be negative. All right, let's go ahead and try this and see what we get. So we have 5x and 1, it's the only way I can get 5x squared, and then I have 2 and 2 or 4 and 1. I have no idea which way is going to work. I'm going to go ahead and try it this way. Let's put the 4 and the 1. Well then this Chris would be 4 and this cross would be 5 and I want the larger, I want that larger product, right? to be negative to match the negative 19. But of course we can already see that four minus five isn't going to be our answer for negative 19. So let's just start this all over. Let's do my five X, one X, and then let's switch one and four. Now to be honest, I already kind of knew that because aren't you starting to see it in your mind a little bit and that five times four was 20 and I could already tell what I wanted. But I wanted to emphasize it to you guys and make sure that you're understanding. So here, Crisscross, I have 1 and 20. B is negative, so I need the larger product to be negative, which means 4 has to be negative right there. Okay, so this is plus. And then that's negative, there's my negative 19. So now my final answer is 5x plus 1 and x minus 4. Be careful on that because I think a lot of stuff was going on there and I don't want you to make any little mistakes. Remember those parentheses go right around it and then we rewrite it. Okay, what do you think about number 18? 18, I want you to maybe try yourself. C is negative, so we have negative and positive. B is positive, so then the larger product needs to be positive. How about you pause it, try, come back and check. Did you get that? I hope so. Now we're looking at this number 19. C is positive, but B is negative. Whenever C is positive, remember our signs are gonna match, either both minuses or both pluses. And of course, if B is negative, they're both gonna be negatives. So go ahead and give number 19 a try and we'll check back in with you in a moment. Did you get three X minus two X minus four? Awesome. Just to emphasize when we have that plus C and that minus B, we have a minus minus binomial. Let's try another one. Number 20. 3x squared minus 24x minus 27. Okay, so if I start with my crisscross method, I'm gonna get 3x, 1x, and then I start to look at that. Wait a minute, did I start strong on this one? I jumped straight to crisscross, but look, I have a three in common in all three of these terms. I could pull a three out of 3x squared. I could also factor it out of negative 24x and negative 27. So hold on, pause, let's try this again. So if I pull out the greatest common factor, three, 
x squared minus 24 divided by 3 is 8x minus 27 divided by 3 is 9. So now that I've pulled the GCF out, I can take this trinomial and factor that. So let's go off to the side and do that. x squared would be x and x, then multiplies to negative 9 adds to negative 8. So I want to end with a negative and have a negative as my middle term. So one of mine, I'm going to have to use a negative and a positive, and I want the middle term to be negative, so I'm going to want the highest product to be negative. So multiplies to 9. 3 and 3, but that's not going to add to negative 8. So let's do 9 and 1, highest product negative. That way when they add together, I still get a negative. Add those together, I'm going to get negative 8x. Boom, that's what I wanted. So here's my two factors. So now I can head back to my original so writing down that three, because I did pull out that GCF, it is not okay to drop that three, so make sure you still write it in front. But my two factors are gonna be x minus nine and then x plus one. All together, there's my factored form. 21, if I wanna start strong here, I, I'm looking for a GCF, I don't see one, so I'm gonna go straight to crisscross method. Multiplies to six x squared. I could use six and one, or I could use three and two. So we actually have more than one option here. So you can kind of pick which one you wanna start with, and then if it doesn't work out, you can always switch back to the other. I think I'm gonna go with three and two. So three x, two x, I wanna to multiply to negative 30 and add to a positive 11. So since I'm multiplying to a negative, I know I'm gonna need a negative and a positive, and I wanna get a positive middle term, a positive B, so that means I want the highest product to be positive so that when they add together, I get a positive answer. So let's think, um, multiplies to 30. I could do five and six, I could do two and 15, or I could do, what, like three and 10? Since I'm trying to get to an 11, I think I'm gonna choose the three and 10. Okay, so let's do crisscross and see if it works. If I add those together, oh man, I get positive 24 and that is not what I wanted. I wanted an 11, so that's out. Okay, well let's try again. What if, um, I guess I could switch these two or I could switch these two or I might have to do 6x and 1x all together. So let's try to just switch, um, let's go with the negative 3 and 10 first and see if that fixes it. So I'd get, okay, 3x, 2x, that's remaining the same. I'm switching, so I get positive 10, negative 3. Chris cross, awesome, 20 minus nine is 11, positive 11, x, so I'm getting that middle term that I wanted, so I just found my two factors. So we're gonna make sure we write it in factored form, three x plus 10, and then two x minus three. Awesome, how about you go try 22? Let's go over 22. As I started this one, I noticed, okay, C is positive and the middle term is negative. So that means I'm gonna need both of my factors to be negative or both parts of my binomial to have subtraction so that they multiply to a positive. Okay, so then the decision really came up to four X squared. I could use two X and two X or I could use four X and one. I started with two X and two X, but then as I'm running numbers in my head, I couldn't get any of them to work to multiply to 12 and add to 19. So then I scrapped my two X and two X and went to four X and one and then figured out, okay, I could use negative three and negative four in this placement here. They would add to negative 19. So I know that my two factors are four X minus three and x minus four. As we get better at this, we'll start to run those numbers more in our head and we won't have to show as much in our crisscross method. 23, we wanna get that 84 in the middle and we're starting with 49 for my A term. Well, I think you know where to start. Go ahead and do it and then check back with me. Okay, I kinda knew where this was heading already and you'll get better at recognizing it. But did you notice that our factors for A match seven times seven and the factors for C match six times six, but they're both negatives because B is negative, right? And we end up with seven X minus six times seven X minus six. Well, we can rewrite that because what are we actually doing? We're taking seven X minus six, that quantity, and we're squaring it. This is known as a perfect square trinomial because we get it by squaring a binomial. Next one, Take a look at 24. How quick can you do it? Go, I'll race you. Okay, I should be a tad quicker, right? Make sure you understand the math. Do that crisscross method, check your work. All right, back to 25. We have a binomial, not a trinomial, but it's still an x squared known as a quadratic. What are we gonna do? This isn't brand new. So there's two ways we can do this. And once you get used to it, you probably won't need to do this, but I can go ahead and rewrite it as 49 X squared plus zero X, right? There is no B term, B X, right? And then minus 36. So now we're still doing our 
crisscross method, and I know I'm pretty close to, right? I need to get zero in the middle, which means the two products have to match. So this would be 42 and that would be 42. But of course the C value is negative. So what happens to my signs? One is a plus, one is a minus, absolutely. So we'll go ahead and make one of them a plus, one of them a minus, boom. We get that plus 42 minus 42, we get the zero X in the middle. So we have to be careful here because I can always tell when somebody hasn't been really paying attention, they try and write this one like a perfect square trinomial and it's clearly not. Seven X minus six, seven X plus six. That's what we want, okay? This is known as a difference of squares because we're squaring the seven X and then we're subtracting the six squared. What about 26? Do you got it? Give it a shot. Did I catch you? You can't do this one. There's no way to get a zero in the middle when C is positive, right? I checked it, 10 and 10, that's 20. They're both pluses. So for now, we just say not factorable. We can't go any further than that at this moment. Looking at number 27, not trying to trick you. Finish that one up. So you probably have that answer from the last one that I might've tricked you on, right? So just to highlight, we cannot do difference of squares when there's a plus in the middle. So just make sure that you have that minus. Miss Ryan, have we covered everything finally? Safe. We got it. Yes.